That's the intro, so let's go ahead and get started with the learning. Let's go ahead and continue. So if we want to go ahead and switch to the um, view of my hand so I can demonstrate what to do. All right, so today I am going to be demonstrating with this yarn, um, Hometown Bonus Bundle, which is closer, so I'll have volume problems. Avoid that. So this yarn is um, Hometown Bonus Bundle. It is a number six um, super bulky yarn, and it's great for practicing because you can see what you're doing, and it's great for um, demonstrating because it's easy for people to see what's going on. This yarn is available on michaels.com in various colors and also on lionbrand.com. So if you want to get this yarn to practice with, um, it's very easy to get your hands on it. So it's available for you. Um, so this, I'm using this different color to demonstrate with because this plain color is much, much easier for people to see. So um, this is a crochet hook. We're going to start with the very basics, just in case um, you need to know the basics. So this right here is the head of the crochet hook. The mouth of the crochet hook is in here. That's the mouth right in there. And then this is either called the throat or the neck. Sometimes you hear it called the throat or the neck. And then this is the shaft up here where it's the thickest part. And then here's the finger rest where we can kind of hold it. So you don't really want to bring your work up, up there because it does get quite a bit thicker right there. So it, it could stretch out your work. So that's your finger rest. So you've got the, the shaft, the throat or the neck, the mouth, and then the head. And hooks are made out of different materials. You can have plastic or wood or metal. Um, it just depends on what you like best. And sometimes they're shaped a little different. This one's kind of pointy. It's not sharp, but it's a little more pointy. So it helps get through the stitch. And sometimes the mouth and the throat are shaped a little different. So you can practice and see what what you like best. So pretty much a real easy tool. Um, everybody, I don't know if you have the handout, but Claire's gonna make the handout available for everybody. Um, if you wanna kind of follow along with the handout or when you watch this back later, you can use the handout. The first thing we're gonna do is learn how to do a slip knot. So if you already know how to tie a slip knot, then um, you can pretty much tie a slip knot however you want, but with crochet, there's one little thing you want to make sure. So the way I like to demonstrate it is, so this is, this is my working yarn because it's attached to the ball of yarn. So this is my long piece because it's, it's the working yarn. And I'm going to leave a tail big enough to weave in um, later for finishing. So you want to leave a, a tail about six to eight inches long, and that's the short piece. So you want to take the short piece over the long piece. So you lay it down like this, you make a loop, but your tail is over the working yarn. So this is short over long, um, kind of looks like a, a six. And then you put your hand in that loop. So you're kind of going under the loop. You hold onto that tail and you're going to pinch the tail and pull it back through. And that gives you your slip knot. Now with crochet, it's really important that the tail is what controls the knot. Because once you, um, once you start crocheting, you want to be able to pull that tight. You don't want it to be loose and open. So it's very important that the tail is what controls the, um, how big the, the loop is. So if you know how to tie a slip knot, um, double check and make sure you're tying it in a way that the tail controls um, the loop. So I'm going to show you one more time. See how we do. So make a loop like this and put your tail over your working yarn. So it's short over long. And then you reach into that loop and you go under. So you're going outside of the loop. You want to hold onto that tail because you don't want it to pull through or you'll end up with nothing. So you grab onto that tail, pull a loop back through, and then hold your working yarn in your tail to cinch it up. 
and then make sure your tail is what is controlling it. And then you just want to pop your crochet hook right on there. And you don't want to cinch it up tight around your crochet hook to resist the impulse to do that. But you just want to kind of loosely on there. So does anyone have any questions about that? Do we want to see it again? Or are we ready to move forward? I think let's show that one more time real quick and then move on because we got a lot to cover. Okay. So, okay, so this is my tail. This is the short end. And then my working yarn is connected to the ball of yarn, so it's way over there. It's yards and yards long, so that's the long end. So make a loop like this. And then you put your hand, touch the center of the loop, and then you're going to sneak under the loop like this. With your other hand, you want to secure that tail so you don't pull it through by mistake. So you're going to bring a loop back through and then hold the tail and the working yarn together and kind of cinch it up. And there are many, many, many ways of tying a slip knot. This is just the easiest, I think it's the easiest way to demonstrate. So if you know a different way, the way that you know and the way that you do it is probably fine as long as the tail is what controls the loop. And if it doesn't, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world. You've probably had worse things happen in your life. Um, but that's just kind of a best practice thing. It's not going to like ruin your crochet and make it so it won't work. So you don't have to stress out about it. All right. So once you get... Erin, one yeah. thing we forgot to mention, what size crochet hook are you using there? Oh, well, for this one, I am using an eight millimeter, what I decided I wanted to use. But whatever yarn you're using, it will say on your yarn what the recommended one is. And this one is recommending a nine millimeter. So. I'm going, I would decide to go down one size for the way that I crochet, but you might go up a size. Um, you can try what's best for you. Um, I'm a person, I don't believe that rules always have to be followed and I don't like to be told what to do. So um, I barely take suggestions. And so I'm gonna do what I will. And you can do that as well. Okay, so any other questions before we get going? Good. Lisa had a good one. Does it matter which direction you put the slip knot onto the hook? Like which side is the tail and which side is the working yarn? I'm going to say no. What do you say, Claire? I've never even... I don't think so either. I've never thought about it, so yeah. I'm going to say... I'm going to say no. And maybe, maybe in some situations it could, but um, for what we're doing today, especially, I'm going to say no. All right, so the first part, the first thing we have to do when we're gonna um, crochet something is we do make a chain. And this is, uh, if you knit, this is kind of like casting on. So this sets the foundation and it determines how many stitches you're gonna be working with. So I'm gonna demonstrate that quickly. And in the handout, it, this is how I hold mine. Um, I take mine over my middle finger, my yarn, and I hold my, you want to hold right under your slip knot and kind of hold it, um, pull it tight so that you can see what you're working on. Um, I think the directions say to hold it over your index finger and hold it with your, and hold your working yarn like this with your middle finger and your thumb. But again, I kind of do things my own way, so. I'm going to do it like that. So what you want to do is just kind of figure out the most comfortable way for you to hold it. And now I don't know how I do it because I've tried to demonstrate it too many times. So what you want to do is you're going to take your hook and you're going to scoop your yarn. You're going to hook up the yarn like that. And then you hold under your slip knot to kind of keep it secure. 
and then you turn your hook and you pull it back through that loop. My, my slip knot got a little tight for me fussing with it. So that's your first chain. All right, so you take your hook and you scoop it up like this. You take the hook, you bring it towards you, kind of come in front of the yarn, scoop it up like this. And then if you turn it down, it's easy to bring it through. And then you kind of want to move your um, loop kind of up to the shaft to kind of make sure you're not doing it too tight. Now it's really common that the chain can become very tight. So you want to make an effort not to make it tight. Okay. And then however you're holding it here will be fine. There's, it doesn't matter as long as you are scooping it this direction. You want to come through like this. So you bring your hook towards you and then pick up the yarn. And when you bring it back towards the slip knot, you kind of have to rotate it down to bring it through. And I've got another one. And then as you're doing this, you want to reposition your grip so that you're holding it right under, right under the last loop on your hook so that you're keeping it tight. So I'm going to do a couple just to show you how it normally looks once you get going. So this is what it would normally look like. And you do a couple and then change your grip. See, I don't change my grip every time. So that's what it normally looks like. So, and then you end up with so many so many chains and you kind of want to count them as you go or you can count them after but you know you kind of want to count them as you go because you don't want to do like way too many by mistake so i'll show you that again and does anyone have any questions anything i should be demonstrating any differently put that on you don't want it to be tight so i'm going to kind of fuss with that and open it up a little bit. You want it to be on there kind of loose and don't, don't crochet with your tail by mistake. That's a thing anyone could do. So I'll try to bring this Yes, closer. Laura says her chain is curly, which I think means that it's probably a little bit too tight. It could curl, um, but yeah, if it's curling a lot, it, it could be tight and you, especially when you're learning, if you're practicing, you want to err on making it too loose so that you can actually work into it. And then once you start making a real project, you don't want it to be too loose, but then you know you can even it out as you practice. Um, sometimes you even have to crochet the chain with a larger hook. Uh, that's not uncommon. Okay, so I'll demonstrate this again. So you, you bring it towards you in front of the yarn and then you sneak behind it, turn the hook down, bring it through. And I like to even give it a little extra slack in it. One thing I'm still learning is how to crochet and not actually look at my real hands, but looking at my hands through the camera. So I'm still adjusting to the depth perception for that. So if you see me like trying to scoop up my yarn and I miss, that's what's happening. See, it's not, I leave a little extra, like you don't want to pull this tight. And then as you're practicing, you can decide how much extra and how much, how tight you need to pull it. Okay, any questions about making the chain? The biggest thing you can do wrong here is making it too tight. That's the, that's the mistake that is usually made. We had a couple questions on how to count the chain. Like it does, so when you, it's just your slip knot on the crochet hook, does that count as one? Okay, so we're gonna talk about that now. There's some things I wanna teach you about the chain. Um, 
the slip knot does not count as anything. So don't count, I mean, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. The loop that's on your hook here does not count as anything. So when you start at the beginning and you have just the slip knot on, and if your pattern instructs you to chain 10, chain 20, whatever the number it's telling you, the slip knot does not count as a chain. Um, so because it's the one that's on your hook. So as you as you make more of them, like this loop here does not count as a chain because it's it's the active loop on my hook. Right? And hopefully you can see this. Like this. So if we're going to count our chains, you can kind of see this kind of little V shape right here. If you're a knitter, that kind of looks like a knit stitch. So you just count these. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then my loop. Can you see that? Is it too? I bring it closer. Sometimes it doesn't get as focused. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The light's kind of reflecting off of it. I don't know if you can see, hopefully. All right, any questions about the chain and how to count it? All right. That's okay. Everyone's very impressed at how even your chain is. And I, I mentioned in the chat, but I just wanted to say, remember everyone, you're just learning and it takes practice. Darren's been doing this for years, so don't judge been, yourself against him. I've been crocheting chains since I was about two years old, actually. So, and that's been a, quite a long time ago. All right. So. The next step, so I'm going to chain 11, and I think a good number for us to practice today and for when you're practicing is to chain 11, and then I'm going to tell you why. Um, that way, we're going to end up with 10 single crochets to work with, and you can work across your chain making 10 single crochets. You can count them to make sure that you consistently have 10, and you don't add or subtract any. And then that way you can keep moving back and forth pretty quickly, um, seeing if your edges remain straight. We're gonna talk about a few problems that you have, but it's nice to have a small number that you can count quickly and then you can work your rows quickly. So that's why I think 10 right now is a good number for practice. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on hold for just one second and I have some examples to show. So there's a couple different ways that you can work into the chain and it looks a little different. Um, it's not a huge difference, but it, it does make a little difference. Um, the easiest way in the way that I think you should do it right now is um, you can just go through the top loop, kind of tease this open a little bit. So if you look at the chain and you can see, kind of looks like a V, what we're gonna do is go through the top of that V right there. Um, when we're doing single crochet, it's going to instruct us to go um, on the second chain from the hook. And I'll show you why in just a second. So there's the first chain. There's our loop, our active loop, which does not count. That's the first chain from the hook. And then the second chain from the hook is right here. Um, and I've been kind of fussing with it, so it looks a little weird. But what we're going to do is go through that loop here, and I'm going to demonstrate this several times. Go through that loop here, and that's where we're going to start making our first single crochet. So you yarn over, bring up a loop, and now I have two loops on my hook. You yarn over, and you pull this through both loops. And that is my first single crochet. Now my next one, I'm gonna go through this top loop of my V. So you go right through here. So right through there. 
And I tend to wrap my yarn around it, but you can scoop it with your hook. It doesn't make much difference. Bring it through. You can see you kind of hold, hold here. It makes it a little bit easier. Yarn over. Pull it through both. So you enter here, going under that top loop. Yarn over, pull it back through. I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, and then pull it through both. How's that? Any questions? Any particular part of that you want me to show? Lower or good? I'd say we can probably show it a few times if you have to get to the end of the row there. Okay. I just clarified well, for people in the chat that this was the single crochet. Single crochet, I'm working in the chain through the top loop. So I do want to show a couple more ways you can work into the chain just so that you know about it, but I recommend you work through the top loop as you're practicing because that's the easiest. The next way you can work into the chain is you've got your V here. You're going to go through both loops. So you kind of go through here. I think this is the hardest one. Well, didn't quite get it right. And I'm going to show you the difference after I do a couple. So, so when you're working through just the top loop, you're going to go through here. When you're working through both loops, you want to go through here. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's not super important that you learn this from the beginning, but I do want you to know that it is a thing. And I'm going to show you a little bit of the difference. And you'll see that it's subtle. And then the next way you can do it is if you turn it to the back, I don't know if you can see this clearly or not, right here on the back, you have these bumps, kind of like a spine that goes on the back of it. So here, here, and here. So there, there, and there. And you can work into that back loop. You can kind of hold it with your finger to kind of help, help find it. And then you yarn over, pull a loop through, Yarn over. So this is all single crochet, but just different ways to work into the chain. And then that last one. So I've changed, I've done it three different ways on this chain and you would never do that in real life. You would pick one and that's how you're gonna live your life for that chain. You can do it different on each project, but, so let me show you what it looks like. So the first time I showed you, we went through the top loop of the chain, and this is what it looks like. And one thing about this, it does kind of create this hole here. And so some people don't like that, but you really don't notice it so much unless you pull on it a bit. So you kind of get that hole. And this one, where we went through both loops, you don't get that hole so much. So it kind of closes that up. And the main benefit of going through the back bump is that the bottom of your work, you get this very nice edge that looks exactly like your top edge, pretty much. So if you're doing a baby blanket or a scarf and you're not gonna have a border or anything, then um, 
it gives you, it, the edges look the same. And especially I'm gonna show you later on a seaming technique. If you're gonna sew these two edges together, it makes it a little easier to go in. So that's three different ways you can work into the chain. Um, you go through the back bump, you go through both loops, or you can go through the top loop. Okay, so you don't have to worry too much about that right now. I just wanted you to know that it is a thing. All right, so any questions about that? Are we ready to move forward? You wanna see it again on any, one, any of those or? I think if we can backtrack to where you switched from, how did, when you were making the chain to switching into the first row, how do we switch from a chain to a single crochet? Okay. And just pick, I think probably the, the first method of working into the chain and do that. Perfect. That's the what, one I recommend for beginners. Got back on my slip knot. So for single crochet, you want to work into the second chain from the hook. So my active loop does not count. I've got my first chain right here. You can see that's the first chain. I'm going to work into the second chain, which is this one. And so I'm just going to work right into there. So you enter the chain. Wrap your yarn, bring up a loop, wrap your yarn, bring it through both. And then here's my next chain right here. So I usually take the head of the needle and push it through this way. Sometimes I'll do this, I'll kind of take that point there and go through. So whichever way works for you at the moment sometimes. And then you yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull it through both. Now I have two. There's my next one. So if you kind of pull this, you can see that you have your crochet in that one. So you go to the next one. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull it through both. That's the one I just did. That's the next one. And then once you get good, it'll go a little faster like this after you practice. It doesn't take a lot of practice. You do, however, need to practice. Um, and then your hands will start to remember what to do. But you wanna make sure you're looking like this. This is the one we just did. So that's the next one. So you enter the chain, wrap the yarn, pull up a loop, wrap the yarn, pull it through both. Enter the chain, yarn over, bring up a loop, yarn over, pull it through both. I kind of split my yarn there. There, I got it. Enter the chain. This is my last one. Yarn over. Bring up a loop. Yarn over. Pull it through both. Now I finished my row. Let's see how many I ended up with. Because I unraveled a couple times and went back. So I have one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I did end up with ten. So do you see how I'm counting those when I'm counting? Any questions about how to count it? We did have, a, there's a lot of left-handed people in the class. 
and they are wondering if they should try to reverse the way that you're holding. So hook and left hand yarn and right. Just try to do the stitches backwards or how would you tell a left-handed person how to learn to crochet? That's what I would recommend. So with knitting, knitting is a different situation, but with crochet, you should have the hook in your dominant hand. And I, I would think ideally you should have the hook in your dominant hand. That's how I would recommend trying it at first. And then just kind of reversing it. Um, I don't think I can do it with my left hand to demonstrate. Let's try it. Let's make a horrible, horrible mistake to try it. So I'm gonna work back. Let me wait, do one thing. So when you get to the end of your row, what you want to do is you do have to, ch it's called chaining up. So you do have to do one extra chain when you're working single crochet. And what that does, that creates this side edge. So now that I've kind of created this little height of it for the side, now we can start working across. Um, so you always have to chain up one for single crochet, and then when you do half double and double and triple, it changes. But we're going to focus just on single crochet today. Um, so you want to chain up one before you start your row. So now I still am going to have to do 10 across to finish my row. So the chain up doesn't really count as a stitch. Let's see if I can do it left-handed. So you want to go through... That's where I'm looking to go through. So you enter the stitch, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, and I'm gonna have to practice this so I can teach left-handed people, okay? So that's where you want to go through. That's your next stitch. So you want to go under there, 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 and there, all the way across. So enter the stitch, yarn, oops, yarn over. I'm going to do it right handed because. Not going to be a good teacher with my left hand. Okay. So you enter the stitch, yarn over, bring it through, yarn over, so if you see where I'm going, I'm looking for these V shapes at the top. And then where you're going is kind of in this hole. So you can kind of feel for it as you're learning. Kind of feel for that opening. So enter the stitch. That's the next one. Enter the stitch. Yarn over. Bring up a loop. Yarn over, pull it through both. Enter the stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop, yarn over. And at this point, always remember, and this is for single crochet, you'll have two loops, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull it through both. Any questions about any of this? right now. We do have a few questions. So now that we're working into stitches, are you going under both legs or through just one? Um, you're going through both. So um, for what we're doing today, we're going to go through both. So we go through here. So I'm going through this hole and what that looks like is going through both, right here. 
But that being said, um, and for different reasons and for to create different types of texture, sometimes you do, and I don't want to confuse you, but sometimes you'll go through the back loop. Sometimes you can go through just the front loop. Sometimes you go around the post. All right, Darren, you're lots, getting too advanced there. <laughs> lots of stuff to do. So, but for what we're gonna practice today, I just want you to know there are lots of things you can do. Um, not, there's no wrong way to do it, but you just have to do, make sure you're doing it the way you're supposed to for the pattern you're doing. So you go through this hole. We're going to pick up both of these, yarn over, pull it through both, yarn over, and then pull it through both loops. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I think since you're close to the end of the row, that'll cover a couple questions here. Um, a couple people missed when you did your chain and then how did you start going back the other direction? Do you turn the okay. work around? Do you flip it? Yeah, I was kind of practicing trying with fussing with my left hand at that point. So, so here is the last one. We'll go through there. Yarn over. Now I have two loops. Okay, so I finished my stitching. I did all 10 of my stitches. And as you're practicing, I recommend that you stop right here every time you finish a row and count them and make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's really easy to add one or lose one. So if you practice counting them at the end of each row, then um, it'll help you remember. If you if you've done something wrong in the middle or at the end, you might remember something weird happened and you might be able to go back and figure out what you did wrong. Okay, so I finished all my stitches. I'm going to do my chain up. I'm chaining one. Remember what that does, that creates the height. So a single crochet is this tall with the yarn I'm working with. And so I give it that height. And then now I still have to work 10 all the way across. So I chain up, turn my work. And then I'm still going to go in here. Okay, yes. And this is the other question that a bunch of people had. If you skip the first stitch, how do you still end up with 10 stitches? Let's count them. So you, I did this chain. That was my chain up, right? So we're gonna skip that one. And I'm gonna go into this one. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you're not really skipping the first stitch per se. What you're skipping is you're working into the second chain from the hook. Um, so that first chain is our chain up for our side for the height of the side and then this is kind of counting as a chain but it's at this point it's not really a chain it's a stitch so you just kind of skip that first one does that answer that does that make sense yeah so then in your beginning chain at least for single crochet you want to chain one more than the number of stitches you need to end up with correct but the pattern will tell you how many to chain so if you're yes. making a pattern and you're gonna have 20 stitches, 20 single crochets, it will tell you to chain 21. So you wanna follow the instruction. You don't wanna add a chain. Um, the designer will have thought about that for you already. So, but yes, if you chain 21 and you're working single crochet, you will end up with 20 single crochets working across. Or you should, you think everything's going well. All right, any other questions about how this works? I think that's okay. Just a time check for you. We've got about 20 minutes left. Okay, we better get moving along. All right, so let's see what else, what else we have in store. We've covered quite a bit, really. So, check the handout. So we did the single crochet. 
you did the turning. So what we have left now is some seaming techniques. So um, just to kind of make it clear, what you continue doing is you'll just continue working the rows and it goes pretty fast once you get practice. And I do recommend trying to practice a little every day. Um, couple, maybe like 15, 20 minutes or half an hour each day. Um, as long as it, once it starts to get tedious, you're not having fun, you know, quit and come back to it another time. But each time you do a row, it really adds quite a bit to your work, especially with this big yarn. Finish your row chain up, turn your work, count your stitches and make sure, and then there you go. So that's pretty much it for single crochet and working into the chain. So no questions for that. I'm going to move into some seaming techniques. And one of them is something we're gonna be doing when we make the wristers. So I've made these two squares and this would be a really great project if you wanted to crochet a bunch of squares and you can just decide for yourself, like I think these are 10 and like 10 across, so you chain 11, um, continue working until it's about a square, just make them all the same size and then sew them together and make, you could make a baby blanket or you could sew them together and make a long scarf. But practicing making these squares would be great practice, um, keeping your edges straight and maintaining the stitch count. So this would be a fun, you don't need a pattern for this. You know, just make a bunch and then I'm gonna show you how to seam them together. So with crochet, there's two different ways of looking at it, two different ways it's presented. So we've got our chain and then the end, the end of the row. So they look a little different than the sides. So as we're working up the side, it's one way, it looks one way. And our chain and then the top of our work look different. So they, they look the same and then the sides look the same. So the seaming is going to be a little different for that. So when you're sewing the sides together, well, so this is what I'm using. Um, I'm using a large eyed blunt needle and these are also available at michaels.com or lionbram.com. You just want a, a needle that the eye is big enough to put yarn in. It shouldn't be sharp because we're going between the strands of yarn, we're not piercing them. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into the corner of this one. So I'm gonna pick up two strands of yarn to get the complete stitch, go through the corner. You just want your corner to line up nicely. And then I like to go through this right here. You can kind of see the texture looks different, but I like to find these. Right here. And then on this side, probably take it from right there. And if you're seaming it and it doesn't look right when you're done, it's very easy to take it out and give it another try. And so this would give you a nice edge, a nice seam for sewing the edges together. Or you could also whip stitch it. So if you look at this side, you can see it looks pretty good from both sides. Um, when you're working single crochet like this, um, it's a reversible fabric. So this, it's the same on both sides. If you wanted to, you could hold it like this. Erin, yes. can you hold oh, it sorry. a little bit higher up towards the middle? Thank you. Sorry. You can hold it like this, also whip stitch it. But what you wanna make sure you're doing, you want your stitches to be spaced out the same and you want them to be the same depth. So you want to make sure you don't want to like go super deep and then super close to the surface. 
You don't want to pull it too tight. If you pull it really tight, it's going to cause your work to kind of, um, dis it'll distort your work. So that's the whip stitch. And you would just keep going all the way up until you finish it. So there's two different techniques on that. And you can see they both look pretty good. You really can't. Can you go back and show the first one? I think it was a little bit too far down on the screen okay, when you were doing exactly. it initially. Do it. So this one, you would bring it on this side and you want to make sure you're getting a good corner. So you want to pick up two strands. Oh, you're totally off screen okay. now. There we go. I'm trying to look, at, yeah, it's hard for me to look through the camera. I'm still practicing that when I'm working. I need a pair of scissors. I got the tangle, then I couldn't get it to where I needed it to be. Let's just rip this out and give it a go. So you can see if you do a, a seam and it doesn't look nice, it's very easy to take out. Give it another try. Going through here. And then go through right here. And you can try it a couple different ways. And if you don't, I would. This isn't my favorite way. I would probably use the whip stitch if it were me. But the main point is, is don't be afraid of seaming. You know, go ahead and give it a try. But you can see and, that gives it, gives it a nice edge. I mean, a nice seam. Okay. And I want, I want to show you the next one. What? Were you using the tail from your piece or did you start with a new piece of yarn? I use the tail from my piece. I find that if I know I'm going to be seaming, I, I'll leave a really long tail and I'll use that to seam with. I find that to be a good, a good idea. And then I think we might have skipped over when you're done with when you're done crocheting. How do you finish off the piece? Okay, I did skip over that. Mm -hmm. Let me show you this seam really quick, and then we'll go back to that. So this one is if we're seaming. So this is the the bottom edge from when I did my chain, and this is the top. Well, this is the when I did my chain, and this is the top of my crochet when I ended my work. You can see they look very similar. Okay, so I'm gonna sew those together. And this is the seam we're gonna use when we make our wrist over. Just thread it on my needle. If you're having a hard time threading your needle, get a piece of paper, wrap your yarn, and then use that paper to bring your yarn through. Just like kind of a shoelace. Okay. So this is a much easier seam, much easier situation. Because if you were going to crochet an edge onto this, you would go through right there. So if you're going to crochet, that's where we're going to go. So we're going to use that exact same thing when we do our seam. So we'll go through here. And then I'm going to go back through there and go through the same one on this side. You see how this is very easy? 
This will keep your stitches spaced out exactly the same distance and plus you're going the same depth each time. So you see, um, you're just going under two. You wanna make sure you're picking up both. Just like if you're gonna crochet, you go under both of them. And then this side under both. You don't wanna pull it really tight, but you do wanna pull it kind of snug. So this is a running stitch, which I like the running stitch. Or if you're gonna whip stitch it, it'll be the same, only you are jumping over it each time. So here's the whip stitch, where you're always entering it from the same side. Oops, don't let your yarn wrap around your piece. So for the whip stitch, you're always entering it from the same side. And I'll show you the running stitch again, how it contrasts. So you'd pick one, you wouldn't switch back and forth. So the running stitch, see how I enter my work from that side? And then now I'm gonna come from this side. I don't know why I like the running stitch better, I just like it better. Okay, so then once you finish your work, I kind of got off track, I don't have a nice edge, so I'd probably rip this out and try it again. Or maybe it'll work. Anytime you do a seam, you want to, after you're done, you want to evaluate it and make sure it looks good before you weave in your ends. I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends now. Well, before you get that far, Darren, I think sorry, I might have been unclear. Um, did we show how to, so when you've crocheted your last stitch, how do you cut the yarn and finish off the piece? Okay, let me show you that. Couple back. So we're working on this piece. Okay, we're doing our single crochet, just like normal. Okay, I finished all of my stitches. So now I've finished, this is all I'm doing for this piece. I just need this little piece for something. So normally if we were continuing on working, we would do our chain up here, right? Well, we're not gonna do that because we're done. So what we wanna do is, you're gonna cut your work, cut your working yarn, leaving um, at least a six, to eight inch long tail for weaving in your ends. And then all you do is you pull this up and you pull that end up through like that. You want me to do that again? It's almost so easy, you might not see what happens. Okay, so. So you finish your last crochet and I've already cut my yarn. And all you do is you pull this straight up, just pull it straight up until you pull that end through and that secures it. Any questions about that? I think that clarifies it. And I've said it a couple times in the chat, but I wanted to say it verbally for anyone who's not paid attention to the chat. A reminder that the recording of this class will be available tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes and on the Michaels YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch it and pause and rewind as many times as you need to. Now, once you finish, we do have to weave in these ends. So we don't really want to tie any knots. Knots come untied. And they also leave kind of an unsightly bump on your work. So again, using the large eyed blunt needle. And a crochet stitch is a three dimensional stitch. It's kind of thicker and it's kind of deeper than knitted stitches. So, so this is my end. So I do wanna make sure I secure that. So I'm going to kind of just go under here. 
and pull that through. And this should be invisible. You don't want it to show. So what I'm going to do is just kind of weave my needle through my work like that. You can't really see where my needle is because it's buried in the work. But you do want to double check and make sure it's also buried on the other side. And then pull it through. And you don't want to, again, you don't want to pull it tight, kind of massage it out. Now let me show you that again. I'll do it a little slower this time. So pick up, so see I'm just picking up a stitch there, picking up a strand of yarn there. And you can kind of see how the stitch is shaped, it almost looks like a, like a half circle. So maybe go down that way. And then always double check and make sure it's hidden on the other side. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Let me do it wrong once. Sometimes if you do something wrong. Okay, so I'm going to take my, I'm going to pick up this stitch and I'm going to follow this, kind of this half circle, this direction. Okay, looks good. But if you turn your work over and you see your needle, that means when you pull your yarn through, you're going to see your yarn. And in this view right here, it doesn't look so bad, but sometimes that could look really bad. And it, it, when you look at it in real life, I can see that it, it doesn't match my other stitches. So I don't know if it shows up as bad on the camera as it is in real life. So you wouldn't want to do that. And then after you go across about two to three inches, you want to work your way back in the opposite direction. So kind of go under there. Here, and there's really not, I don't I hate to say there's not really a wrong way to do it. I mean, as long as it's kind of invisible. So I'm going under this one, going under this one, going under this one, under that one. So my needle's buried in the middle of my fabric. And you can see it's not visible on that side. So when you pull it through, and then you wanna look at it, you wanna make sure it's not changing the way your fabric looks. You're not distorting your stitches, you're not adding any weird texture, um, and then you know you're good. So you wanna practice this on, some, on a scrap piece a couple of times before you do it on your real. Um, you can take it out if you don't do it well, but it's kind of hard to find. So if you kind of pull this, you can kind of see where it moves and kind of pick it out, but um, it's not so hard to do really. And then you want to pull it a little tight, and then you cut it off flush with your fabric, and then kind of massage it out to make sure that you didn't pull your fabric too tight. And there you go. Now, I do want to review the pattern quickly. If there are no other questions, I don't want to leave you without the pattern being reviewed. Any other questions? All of this. Ooh, hang on here. I was answering a whole bunch in the chat. <laughs> oh, no. um, let's see. Well, you mentioned a slip stitch at some point. <laughs> um, Sorry, everybody. I was concentrating on typing in the chat. Maybe not. Um, let's, let's review the pattern, and then I can show you a slip stitch at the end, if we have time. Because the pattern's pretty quick to review, so we might be able to do it. So these are the wristers that the pattern is kind of like hand warmers. Let's just review it quickly. It's super easy. I just want to make sure that you see how easy it is so that you can actually make something after you practice a bit. Um, the yarn that this one is using is Lion Brand Heartland, and the pattern actually used one called Yellowstone, but I used a different color. Again, I don't like to be told what to do. I use, I don't know how to say that. Claire, how do you say that? 
Dry tortugas. Okay, there you go. It's dry tortugas. And um, you only need one skein, would make several of them really. Um, that's available on michaels.com or lionbrand.com. Um, a crochet hook size I9. I think I actually used a J. Um, again, I'm just gonna do my own thing. And then you need large, an, a, one large eyed blunt needle just for weaving in your ends. You just need one. And so making the wrister, you wanna make two of them. You chain 21. So after you practice a bit, you should be able to do that without too much trouble. Row number one, single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So you wanna make sure you do it in a second chain from the hook and you'll end up with 20. Um, chain one and turn. So that chain one creates your little edge stitch to kind of give you the height. Um, you're gonna single crochet in each stitch across and you're gonna repeat row two until the piece measures about six and a half inches from the beginning and then you're gonna fasten off. So you'll cut your work and then you'll pull your work, your working yarn through that loop like I showed you. And for finishing, I wanna show you this quickly. You wanna fold the wrister in half, bring the first row, which is the chain, to meet the last row, and you're gonna sew the edges together for one inch, leave the next one half inch open for the thumb, and then you're gonna sew the remainder shut and weave in the end. So I have this one, which I made, which I didn't finish for just such an occasion. Okay, so here's my, one of my, it's the chain edge, and here is my last row. So we're gonna fold it this direction, and we're gonna sew it shut. So, and again, I'm gonna use my long, I'm gonna left a really long tail on this side to use that for my seaming. I think that's a smart trick. And with this, you'll just use the whip stitch um, or the, the running stitch. So you bring these together. And then all you do is you go down and you'll do it for an inch. So I'm not gonna measure it just for the sake of argument. Let's say that's an inch. And then I'm going to re, I'm gonna make that one a little extra secure because that's gonna be my opening for my thumb. And then you wanna go an inch and a half without seaming it for an opening. So I'm gonna do it this way. So that way I don't wanna have to cut my yarn and reattach it. So I'm just gonna take my working yarn just down one side so I'm not seaming, as you can see. Okay, I'm not going to stop to measure because we're just trying to get through this quickly. Let's pretend that's an inch and a half. And now I'm going to reattach both sides. And I'm going to go through that same stitch again twice because that's I want to have a, I don't want the opening to pull loose, pull it really tight. Um, when you're doing this though, you would want to measure very carefully to make sure you're getting it right. And then you would finish it off and then weave in the ends like I showed you. Okay. So these wristers, um, I find them a bit short. So I wanted to encourage you to experiment and maybe try something new. So I chained 30 ones for this. So I chained 31. I made them quite a bit longer. And because my hands are bigger than a woman's hand, I did seven inches instead of six and a half. So you can see now it covers most of my hand, it covers my up to my pinky, and then it covers most of my wrist. Um, so that way when you wear a coat, you're not gonna have your, um, your wrist so this covers a little bit more. So it's the same exact skill. Um, the same pattern will work, except all you have to do is chain 31 instead of 21, or maybe you chain 25 and make it just a little longer. You know, it, it, you can make this one first, 
And then you can kind of use this one to measure and be like, oh, maybe I want to chain 40 and make a really long one. So, and then you just, I just laid it, my hand on it and I seamed it where I wanted it. I wanted it to cover most of my pinky. And then I left the opening that fit my hand, that fit my thumb. And then I just seamed the rest shut. So that way you can make it, if you have a friend that has, if you have a child that has very small hands, you could make a smaller one. You know, we reverse this theory. Or if you have a, um, a man, if there's a man that has very large hands, you could make it much larger. So that way you can make them to suit anybody that you have, um, you might want to make a gift for. They make, they work up really fast and they make nice gifts is what I'm hoping you'll be able to do. Okay, any questions about that? And then I can show you the next page. I was gonna say, we're actually over time. It's about 10 after five here on the East Coast. Um, I'm gonna put the handout and the patterns for this class in the chat here one more time. And another reminder that the recording for this will be available tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes and on the Michaels YouTube channel. And if you wanna keep your going on your crochet journey, we have Crochet 102 coming up next Monday, same time, same place. And then Crochet 3 the following Monday. So that is gonna be October 12th and then October 19th. If you wanna keep crocheting along with us. If you have any questions um, going forward, you can find me on Instagram, maybe Claire will put it in the chat, my Instagram handle, it's Mr. Wooly Bear, M-I-S-T-E-R, spelled out Wooly Bear. And um, I can usually get back to people pretty quick if you have general questions. And so I'm doing the slip stitch right now. The slip stitch is you enter the stitch, yarn over, and you just kind of pull it through both. It's just a tiny little, very flat stitch. And there are videos online. So if this, I mean, this doesn't really teach you, but um, if you Google slip stitch, put it in YouTube, there'll be tons of videos on how to do the slip stitch since we didn't have time. Okay, anything else? I think that's it. Um, if you wanna sign up for the next week classes, you can do that at michaels.com slash classes. And they'll have instructions on that page. Okay, so that's it. Um, practice a little every day, and that way, before you know it, it'll start to be second nature in your hand, and you'll, you'll be crocheting before you know it. So just don't forget to practice. All right, thanks everyone. See you next week.